Here to give us his insights on the latest economic headlines, we have with us on the program RCBC Chief Economist and Head of Research, Mike Ricafort. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for joining us again. Hi, good morning, uh, Jago and to your viewers. Okay, sir. First of all, inflation is at 4.9%. Now, was this expected? Well, uh, well, this is somewhat uh, slower than what the markets expected, uh, at least uh, 5% mm -hmm. from 6.1%. So, well, uh, well, uh, I, I think uh, uh, practically, well, well uh, almost all of, of those polled uh, didn't uh, get that uh, mm -hmm. figure below 5%. But nonetheless, it's a pleasant surprise because uh, we have seen, well, generally, this is largely brought about by better weather conditions, mm, okay. uh, especially the impact on uh, food prices, especially agricultural products like vegetables, rice, uh, because we didn't see uh, storm damage mm -hmm. in October as yes. against uh, large storm damage uh, in the latter part of July till early September. That's right, that's right. That, uh, uh, so, during that time, up to early July, there was some spike in uh, food and uh, especially vegetable prices mm. and other produce. Uh, that's always expected whenever there are large storms. So, now, uh, we have seen... Because, why, why, is, why, why is that? Uh, with better weather conditions, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen, of course, uh, more output, more supply from agricultural products and uh, some e easing in prices with increased yes. uh, supply. Mm -hmm. And uh, food accounts for nearly, or, well, about a third of the inflation basket. That's why it's very significant. And uh, rice alone accounts for nearly 9% of the inflation basket. And uh, uh, we have seen already the price ceilings on rice or yes. scrap. Uh -huh. uh, it, it was just a temp. Temp it was just temporarily in place from from September five to October four, uh, precisely because it uh, we have already seen the early harvest season okay. since mid September and well into October that increased the supply of uh, palai and rice and some easing of uh, local rice prices uh, as part of the justifications for lifting the said uh, price ceiling yes. and, uh, and not just locally. Uh, we have seen also some easing in uh, world rice or Thai rice uh, benchmarks. Yes. After reaching a high 15-year high last August, we have seen it mm -hmm. uh, steadily or gradually easing into in in September and into October as well. So those are the main contributors, and the fact also that uh, the peso exchange rate uh, already improved. Okay. Uh, especially of late, uh, the, we have seen a stronger peso, the strongest in more than three months that would lead to lower import prices eventually. And uh, some semblance of stability for most of October as uh, it has been capped uh, towards, uh, well, it didn't reach uh, the, the 57 level still. That's right. That's and right. now, uh, despite the uh, or despite the effects of the Israel uh, Hamas war, uh, well, we have seen also uh, global oil prices already easing or going down. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, recently, since late last week, mm -hmm. they, already, they already went down to new three-month lows. Uh, the Nimex oil is now doing at uh, a little over $80 per barrel. When okay. right before the war, it was eighty-two dollars. It's now lower by two dollars, and from it reached as high as ninety dollars. Yes, sir. But sir, my, a few my question is, sir, sorry, the, my question, sir, is sorry. We're at the tail end now of the year, uh, October, November, this November, December. Now, will the expected holiday spending push inflation further in the last two months? Now, what is your outlook, sir? Inflation outlook for the full year of uh, twenty twenty-three. But for 2023, uh, well, uh, it's still somewhere between six to six and a half percent. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, that's still well. Now the latest is six point four percent. Well, it may be veering towards a little over six percent for the full year. So it's still 
kind of elevated. But however, uh, come get yeah, through. Uh, that's a very good point, Chego. Mm -hmm. Come the holiday season, uh, the seasonal increase in demand would lead to some seasonal uptick in prices of uh, Noche Buena items, uh, ah, okay, especially okay. those that are purchased by the typical family for the holiday celebrations, like uh, uh, the, the likes of uh, meat products uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but only to go down ah, okay. after the holiday season upon crossing the year. So, so it's something that's okay. uh, temporary, but th that would also still impact on prices so still. Uh, when it comes to, uh, but that this would be felt more mm. by households and families with uh, limited budget. But uh, that we, if you look, the, well, if you look at the headline inflation, how do we see it going forward? It it, the, it may still ease a bit from the current four point nine. It may uh, hover towards a little over four percent by November and December. Provided that uh, there won't be any huge storms anymore, and provided that the geopolitical picture remains relatively stable, there won't. Uh, well, provided there won't be any escalation or okay. a wider or, or a broader war. Uh, so, yeah, that that is still achievable, and th that's already moving closer to the BSP's. That, uh, that sounds good, sir. So you're saying if everything holds through, uh, likely we're seeing uh, four point, uh, at least four percent. But la so let's move right now to the GDP. Uh, uh, Business World Poll says GDP grew to 4.9% in the third quarter. Now, what are your projections? Well, it, at, at around 6% is still possible, Jago. Ah, it is. Uh, okay. Because of the base effects. Uh, because what happened the, the second quarter, we saw slowdown, 4.3%, mm -hmm. because of two things. Uh, we have seen... Uh, that that reflects largely the large the, the the huge denominator the year before second quarter of last year when there was massive election related spending during the local and the national elections presidential elections and that we mm -hmm. don't have that this year yes that's, that's right. why suddenly uh, the growth uh, decelerated uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, secondly we have seen also the impact of higher prices and inflation. As well as the Im adverse impact of higher interest rates and financing costs, that drag also uh, spending by consumers. Consumer mm -hmm. spending accounts for nearly seventy percent of the economy, as well as spending by businesses, industries, government, and other institutions. That's why okay. we have seen also the government uh, well some underspending, especially on infrastructure. But now, prospectively, uh, things would get better. I uh, we just have the. Well, just uh, for the past week or two, and maybe for most of October, we have seen preparations for uh, well, election-related spending yes, during the yes. Barangay and SK elections. So that would be a boost. Yes. And uh, of course, the increased uh, government spending, to, uh, as, as, is, as has been acknowledged, mm -hmm. the need to speed up again in the second half of the year, that would be another source of growth uh, for the rest of the year. And uh, also, well, the reopening narrative, uh, everything is, uh, well, no more restrictions and, uh, uh, well, at least the continued uh, recovery of uh, both local and foreign yes, tourism. Right. And uh, that, that would have a positive impact also on many other businesses and industries as well as uh, preparations for the new school year opening, mm -hmm. uh, uh, among other things. Uh, we have seen employment data that, uh, well, other uh, some indicators that would suggest a better third quarter or even fourth quarter data. Uh, the strongest employment data in terms of uh, the lowest unemployment rate since the, start, since the start of the pandemic and also among the best levels for both employment and unemployment in about 18 years or since 2005. So that would really augur well when it comes to how... Uh, well, the, the, the likely year-on-year uh, -year pickup in GDP growth by the third quarter and also into the fourth the quarter. The, yeah, we, the only drag yeah. is just, uh, well, would be still relatively higher prices or inflation. And of course, the higher interest rates that, that are a drag when it comes to new investments uh, and new 
credit that mm -hmm. fi well financed by new loans or credit that would have otherwise added to economic activity. So that's uh, well, it's still promising though. Uh, external environment, it's kind of mixed. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, kind of mixed because uh, there's still some pockets of softness in U the U.S. economic data. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's also the result of uh, the un unintended consequence of the rate hikes, aggressive rate hikes since last year. In an effort to really, uh, that's the unintended consequence to, well, to deliberately slow down mm -hmm. the economy yes. in an effort to slow down demand and temper and uh, better control inflation, uh, price stability mandate of the central bank. So, yeah, that's a that's the policy consequence, uh, one of the drags also that well, uh, we have all could contend around the world. It will definitely keep a watch on all of this. Again, sir, thank you very much for your uh, insights. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for now. Uh, thank you for joining us, RCBC Chief Economist and Head of Research, Mike Ricofort.